In this video, let's go over why Muslims should read or at least be curious about the Bible. Let's recall that we are explicitly commanded by Allah, by God, to believe in what was sent before the Qur'an. And it's right there at the very beginning of the second surah. وَالَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِمَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْكَ وَمَا أُنزِلَ مِنْ قَبْلِكَ God tells us here that this revelation is a guidance for, quote, those who believe in what has been sent down to you, Muhammad, and that which was sent before you, end quote. So we have to ask, if we are to believe in something, shouldn't we know what it is and what it contains? I think we should. And an important point to keep in mind is that the Qur'an is part of a long history of divine revelation. As Muslims, we hold it to be the final and authoritative revelation, sure, but the Qur'an continuously places itself within this context and is sometimes in conversation with biblical literature. So having an understanding of that literature is going to help us understand and appreciate what the Qur'an itself is speaking of in these situations. Muslim scholarship from classical to current times has also used Christian and Jewish sources to help understand parts of the Qur'an. Referring to these sources has been called Israeliyat in Arabic. Within classical scholarship, this wasn't necessarily always done by consulting biblical texts themselves as they weren't readily available in Arabic. Also, these scholars did not have the benefit of having access to modern biblical scholarly works, which have greatly enhanced our understanding of the Bible. And this leads to the next point. While conservative Christians and Orthodox Jews have trouble accepting many conclusions that biblical scholarship has come to a consensus about, as Muslims, we don't suffer from the same problem. We can embrace and take advantage of this body of work to strengthen our understanding of certain Quranic concepts and stories. This is because in many cases, these findings are in remarkable congruence with what the Quran mentions or alludes to, whether it be about the historical Jesus or the Exodus or even about the composition of the Bible itself. So studying the Bible along with academic commentary and using the Quran as a guiding light, we can gain a better understanding of what the previous scriptures that the Quran refers to actually are or were. That is, the Torah, the Zabur, and the Injil, with the Injil being perhaps the most mysterious and misunderstood of them all. That's not to say we should only be approaching the Bible through the Quran. While this can be a useful and insightful exercise, it is also worth exploring it as a source of two very historically important religions, practiced and honored by billions of people throughout history. So instead of just studying it for Quranic reasons, I'll also be giving Jewish and Christian understandings about certain texts, passages, and verses. This will help us better understand our Jewish and Christian neighbors, societies, and their histories. For sure, there are certain ideas which we can never agree with, like the divinity of Jesus, but there are many areas where we do in fact agree. Knowing all of this is especially important for those living in predominantly Christian countries. Take the United States as an example where we have an estimated 380,000 churches and have been witnessing an increasing evangelical Christian influence within our news, media, politics, and society in general. This has impacted everything from attitudes on climate change to stances on foreign policy. Being biblically literate will allow Muslims living in the West to be better versed with Christian ideologies along with the history and facts behind them. This is important because it forces us to be aware of what we as Muslims have to say and offer in response. I imagine that almost every American listening here has at some point had a missionary knock on their door or been approached by a person in the public asking them if they have time to talk about their Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In these situations, when we don't know anything about Christianity, it can be difficult to relate and share our own faith with them in return. You can be left without a response when confronted with verse after verse of a prophecy supposedly regarding Jesus. As a teenager, I remember being shown Isaiah 53 by a Christian friend. This is a very important biblical prophecy for Christians, which speaks about someone suffering and going through a trial and death just like Jesus, and further that his death would be for the sins of others. What makes this prophecy remarkable is that it was written hundreds of years prior to Jesus. 
As it turns out, this verse is taken completely out of context to make it sound like it's talking about a Messiah, that is, of Jesus. But you'd never know that unless you're already aware of what the book of Isaiah is actually talking about. For Muslim parents, I think it's very important to know enough about not only our own faith, but the faith of the surrounding society that when our children come to us with questions like these, we are able to provide them with satisfactory answers. There are two more important things we can take away from learning about the Bible, even as Muslims. The first being that the Bible remains to be a very important cultural artifact. It has been, in large part, a cornerstone of the Western world since at least the 4th century, when Christianity became the official religion of the Roman Empire. This is quite remarkable when you think about it. Of all the various religions and cults that dominated the ancient world, Judaism is the only one that survived. Originating from a tiny off-conquered nation, a handful of people wrote a series of texts which transformed the entire world, from their time to our own. It's an amazing story which continues to inspire billions. Even now, you will commonly hear verses from the Bible in popular culture without even realizing it, such as, Am I my brother's keep? The skin of my teeth? The powers that be? A labor of love? And many others. But you'd never know the source or even what the original context of these sayings were, unless you read the Bible. And here's the last point. The Bible is a book full of poetry and hymns to God. It is what we Muslims call dhikr, that is, the mentioning of God. True, we have the Qur'an, which we hold to be the greatest form of dhikr, but the Bible also contains much mention of God. This is noted even by Allah when he says, If Allah were not to repel some through others, monasteries and churches and synagogues and mosques wherein the name of Allah is much mentioned would certainly have been pulled down. So what is this mentioning of Allah, that is, the dhikr of Allah, that he would so love and for whose sake he would aim to preserve monasteries, churches, and synagogues? Consider the following psalm which Muslims generally equate with the zabur that was given to David. I think Muslims will find this just as beautiful and moving to read as any Jew or Christian. At times, you can even perhaps hear an echo of Surah Rahman and other parts of the Qur'an. For the sake of time, I will just skim through this psalm, but I would encourage you all to read the whole passage for yourself. So here is Psalm 53. I will exalt you, my God the King. I will praise your name forever and ever. Every day I will praise you and extol your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. The Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and rich in love. The Lord is good to all. He has compassion on all he has made. The Lord is trustworthy in all he promises and faithful in all he does. The Lord upholds all who fall and lifts up all who are bowed down. The eyes of all look to you, and you give them their food at the proper time. You open your hand and satisfy the desires of every living thing. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and faithful in all he does. The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. He fulfills the desires of those who fear him. He hears their cry and saves them. The Lord watches over all who love him. My mouth will speak in praise of the Lord. Let every creature praise his holy name forever and ever.
So to conclude, there is actually a lot we can take away from reading and studying about the Bible, even as Muslims. Overall, it will lead us to a better understanding of what it is and what is contained within the revelations that God sent prior to the Qur'an. It will give us a better understanding of our Jewish and Christian neighbors and societies. We can also learn not only where there are sometimes differences between the Qur'an and Bible, but why these differences exist by examining what biblical scholarship has revealed about the history behind the Bible. And to be honest, we can even come to enjoy and appreciate the Bible for itself. So come join in as we study and read the Bible as a Muslim.